Some people love graphs and charts. This is a pie chart describing my favorite bars. And this is a bar graph describing my favorite pies. And some people hate them. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 But regardless of how you feel about it, graphs are very commonly used to both show and even determine information. We're going to start looking at graphing with one of the easier scenarios and looking at how it can show uniform motion. So let's get started with graphing uniform motion. Okay, so to take a look at graphing motion, we need some things that are going to move. Let's start with four cars there down to the side and a graph to show the motion. There's a couple different types of graphs we could use to look at motion, but this one's going to be a D versus T graph. D is going to represent our position and T going to represent our time. So up and down in the Y axis is going to be where the car is, its position, and then along this way how we're changing in time. We're going to start at zero on that end and increase time as we move this way. Okay. We also need a place to start for our position. So I'm going to put a starting line here and show that that point of the Y axis is going to be the starting line. So beginning with the yellow car, we expect it to start at the starting line. That's its initial position here at time zero. And then we'll see how it's going to change. So as it drives forwards, it goes up and we can see it's increasing its position on the y-axis. Okay, let's do the next one, the blue car. Looks like it's going a little bit faster. We can see on the graph, it looks steeper. It traveled about the same amount of time to about here, but its position, it went further down the track. Looking at the line, the line looks steeper because in that same amount of time, our x variable, it increased its position more up in the y. So this shows us that the faster car looks like it has a steeper line. That's a big thing to notice here. Let's look at the red card now. This one is actually going to start a little bit further ahead. So it's not going to start here at the starting line. Its position is going to begin somewhere up here. And this one's going to drive fairly slow. Okay, so our position started here already further from the starting line, started around this point. But then it didn't go very fast. Over the same time, it didn't increase its position very much. So we get a pretty flat line, which is showing that it's going fairly slow. It had a head start by there, but it's not a very steep line, not changing its position very fast. So the big conclusion to get from these three lines up here is that the steepness of this graph tells us how fast they're going, how quickly you're changing your position over time is describing how fast you're going, how much you change D over t, we saw from previous lessons that that's the definition of velocity or how fast you're going. So steepness equals how fast we're going is a big part to take away from this. We can do one more example with can't forget the green car there. He's going to have a big head start. He's going to begin all the way up here. So that means I'm going to have to start with my position pretty high up in the positive. But the motion there is going to be a little bit different because he's going to drive in the backwards direction. So starts up here, starts way ahead of the starting line, but then position comes back down to the starting line, even goes past it and ends up down here. So we can see goes into the area that is beyond the starting line, behind the starting line. What can we take away from this graph is well that it was going backwards and we see that its slope or steepness here is coming down. So if I get a negative slope, one that's pointing down, that means it's going to be going backwards. So how steep it is, is going to tell me how fast. If it's going up, that's forwards. If it's going down, that's backwards. So there's often theory questions that ask about that comparing velocities or getting information from the graph. And how basically we read what's going on here is that the steepness, the slope is equal to the velocity. That means if it's steep, it's going to be going fast. If it's shallow, it's going to be going slow. And then again, if it's going down, it's going to be going backwards. That's the theoretical part of understanding what's happening in the picture. And we can imagine the cars moving based off this graph. But what if we actually have to calculate the number? 
So say we get a graph like this and reminder that slope is equal to velocity. So a question might say, what's the velocity in this scenario? Well, now we just don't need to say steep. We actually need to calculate a number for slope. And you may remember from math that slope is equal to rise over run. So what I would do every time is when you have a line like this, it's to put some dotted lines on here to figure out your rise and then your run. The red one being the rise up and down and the run being across. Okay, the reason why I put those lines there is I don't want to just worry about the end point of the arrow. I want to look at how much it changed. So let's start with looking at the rise. So it begins over there at 12 and then goes up to 38. Okay, so looking at my rise, 12 to 38 would be an increase of 26. The run's a bit easier in this case, starting over there at zero and then coming to 15. Zero to 15, that's just gonna be 15. So now that we know our rise and our run, let's throw that up into the calculation, 26 divided by 15, and we get our slope to be a value of 1.7. We can also see here that the slope is equal to the velocity because I have my meters on the Y, divided by my seconds in the X, and I get meters per second. So this is showing a velocity of positive or forwards, 1.7 meters per second. And that's basically it for looking at graphing uniform motion, because as you can see, the slope of this line is consistent. It's a straight line. The slope or the steepness is the same the whole time. If slope is velocity, slope's the same the whole time, velocity's the same the whole time. So that's why this represents uniform motion or a constant velocity. I'm gonna do one more example, kind of a short video here for the introduction to graphing, but at this one, we're gonna have the line coming downwards, looking at a backwards graph where we're traveling backwards. Similar to that green car example we had, we're gonna begin with a positive displacement, kind of like past the starting line. It's gonna come backwards down to zero. That's what I might consider the starting line and then into the negatives over here. So if I want to figure out how fast this one was going, do the exact same process. Slope is equal to rise over run. Let's look at our rise and our run with some arrows here. There's the run. Here's the rise. But we notice that we're going down this time and finishing at negative 16, starting at positive 24. So throwing in this negative can be a bit tricky. But think that we started at positive 24, came down to negative 16. That total drop is I dropped 24 and then drop 16 more. So drop the total of 40. Our rise is negative 40 because it came down the whole way. And then our run kind of similar to before, this time zero to 16. So I have a run of 16. Throwing that our formula, our rise being a negative value here, negative 40 over 16 gives us negative 2.5 meters per second. So pretty similar, again, common mistakes I see is people just look at the end point. So they might see negative 16 and throw that in for the rise. So that's why I'd always recommend drawing your triangle and determining the length of those lines. I'll just point out one other common mistake that sometimes I see is students will count squares to determine the rise and the run. They'll count how many it goes down and how many it comes across. And that may have worked in math when the grid is all the same, the X and the Y are the same values. But in this case, hopefully you can see when I go up four squares, that's equal to two. If I go up four squares here, that's equal to eight. So I can't count squares because they're worth different amounts. So that's why I would really encourage putting these values on the X and Y axis to determine how far we go for our rise and our run before doing the calculation. But that's all we've got for today's video. Hope they gave you a nice introduction to graphing uniform motion. In the next video, we'll take a look at a bit more complex scenario, graphing accelerated motion. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in that next video.